<laughs> well, I mean, I mean, the issue is why on earth, why on earth would you not want to optimise the immune system? It's, it's, it's the, the vitamin D, the vitamin C, the vitamin A, the sleep, the exercise, the nutrition, the microbiome. And, and, yeah, it's say, and, and, and what I would like to see is, is, is very large scale trial, trials on your uh, my, mycobacteria vacai uh, vaccine. So because I know that they would work, and I can say that with real assurity, yeah. because it, I first made the observation that everybody in our trial, remember they were all at risk. The average age was around about 70. They mm. all had stage four cancer, so they were really bad. But Very in high the first risk. year, 2020, none of them, this is before any so-called COVID virus uh, vaccine was around, none of them went down with COVID. Or if they did have a few sniffles, that was it. None of them were hospitalised at all. Uh, and they said they felt really good and that they had survived even when their family had gone down with it. So I knew then, and we know, we know why. We know that, that that vaccine is not really a vaccine. And this is my big, big message. The reason it's so effective, it is, it is like a death charge booster of the dying innate immune system, which starts to die from the age of about 55, it collapses to 70. And I've, uh, you know, I love pointing out when I give lectures on this, is that slope of your innate immune system dying is matched by a contrary wing-like uh, feature of cancer incidence growing. They, they, one, one goes down, the cancers yeah. go up. Now, it's a very good example of that to talk about science, because they're incredibly correlated, but doesn't mean to say they're causal. So there could be many other things. So you're, you're jumping, I think. It is, it's a species argument. The two are very related, but it doesn't mean to say it's causal. And one of the words we conned in right at the beginning of this is how you interpret it, this data is sophistry. Basically, what we have been listening to from SAGE, the government, the big farmer, everybody, is sophistry. They only give us the data that fits their paradigm and they uh, don't allow us to have all the other data. So they have been deliberately killing science. I know just when I lost my train of thought because I jumped horses there. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I've got a big list of things we can talk about. Yes, yeah. It, it, what I, 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 do see, I do see a practical problem with the rollout of your uh, vaccine or not vaccine. And uh, the, the problem would be the fight to get to the front of the queue. Because I'm, yeah. I'm certainly up for it if it becomes available. Well, um, just to go back to the other thing before I forget, so it doesn't keep mm. going, right, is that in my researches, I found that Pfizer were funding charities in America to dis treatments that were very good and useful, yeah. including vitamin D. Yeah. Obviously, I have an excellent. And I thought that is real sophistry when you're trying to manipulate good facts to try and make out they're bad and promote them. So back to the back to the IMM, the innate immune system. Mm. Thing. Now I have to declare an interest. I've been pushing the company that makes this emodulin, I've been pushing them for a long time. And I believe it should have been out there approved. Uh, in a paper that I was um, the first author on in 2016, we showed it in a randomized study in pancreatic cancer. I mean, it was really quite incredible. It was chemo versus chemo plus IMM. And the survival curves... Ch chemo plus... Well, what? Sorry, that, that's the vaccine, is it? The, the yeah, IMM 101. As I say, it's not really a vaccine. It boosts the innate immune... IMM 101. It's like right. an immune stimulant. It's like... So the, the, this, is, this is the mycobacteria vacai yeah, yeah. injection. This is the yeah. one. The mycobacteria... This one was OB, OBNC. That was chosen because it's easier to mass produce than vacai. Okay. The effect is very, is very, very yeah. similar. And so you know, when we published that paper, even I was staggered. It was multi-center, it was randomized, and we used the sound treatment at the time, which was a gemcitabine chemotherapy. And a new one had just been introduced, which was very toxic. So we actually ended up in the trial with not the best patients. They were the patients not fit enough for these new treatments. So this made it even more fascinating. Our survival curves were far, highly significant in favour. 
This is a product that had been in thousands of people in TB trials, mm. and they still wouldn't approve it on some rubbish about um, safety and this, that, and the other. I mean, I mean if it was approved, these, then, then doctors regulate. could prescribe it off license, couldn't yeah, they? That's what they should do. These are the same regulators that didn't give a damn about the obvious side effects of a, a, a vaccine for a, a, an agent that wasn't killing anybody, or less than 1% over 80. Here's something that is significantly altering not only the survival, but the quality of life. There was no side effects apart from a reaction at the site. And like other people who promote things, I did this to myself. So I know it, it is perfectly acceptable. And I mean, I never got any, uh, I didn't even know I had COVID because after having that and boosting with vitamin D, when we had the tests, I found that I had the strongest T cell response against the COVID SARS-2 than anybody in my lab had all been vaccinated. So it, sh it proves you don't need antigen-specific vaccination. You need your immune system to wake up and be alert for what's coming in. And, and, and Professor Clancy in Australia, of course, has come up with exactly the same type of thinking with, with his Haemophilus influenzae oral uh, vaccine. Yes. Which goes down, you just swallow it, goes to the pear patches, it's labelled, it goes to the lungs, it protects yes. the mucosal immunity. Yes. V very similar approach, it's boosting. Very, it's, very, it's very similar, and it's what's very interesting. It's highlighted the fact that um, the Mycobacterium vacai, which is the precursor of IMM 101, has been very similar. But um, it, 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 they, there was problems making it to the quality control that they mm -hmm. do, which IMM was quite good. But um, a, a colleague who developed all this, I mean, there was, uh, it was um, Stanford, John Stanford and Graham Rook, developed this whole concept as an attempt to improve on the highly significant benefit of BCG, the old mm -hmm. TB vaccine. But the problems with TB vaccine, it didn't work everywhere. I mean, this is the, I mean, it didn't work in the States very well. It worked, worked well in the UK and plenty of other places in Africa, mm. but not in other places in Africa. So it was that their research was what determines the people in Africa that works well and what's the difference between them and the people who don't get much benefit. And that's when they discovered the MVACI. And that's how they then took it and realised it did the same thing as the BCG, and one of the things that uh, I did, realising that this was so important, was that you can only give BCG once or twice. If you give it a third time, you take away that T-cell boosting it does. If you give it a fourth time, you just completely destroy the immunological system. Now, this was a model I thought was ideal for the COVID vaccine program, because that was, I mean, the, you know, the first vaccine might have helped some people, particularly older people, recently exposed, needed an antibody. But to me, that's the, they're the only people who would, who would ever, ever benefit from it. Mm. But the beautiful thing about the Vakai Obiensi, they did all this other work, and this is what's real science, yep. and they actually showed that heat killing these agents, as opposed, BCG is live attenuated, so mm -hmm. it's live, it's cultured, so it's not very, it just turns over at half asleep. Occasionally it does get out, and one in 2,000 people get TB, but it's very easy to kill. If it's heat killed, it can't possibly do that. Yeah. But we found that with the heat killed one, you could give it again and again and again, and it boosts the T-cell system again and again and again without boosting the inflammatory B-cell response. Mm -hmm. And giving the, you're giving this to your melanoma patients at the moment? Uh, those who are on the program, yes, the, tr the trials. The trials have just finished, unfortunately, and the company are going back to the pancreatic cancer on the grounds that this should give it a quicker approval than melanoma. As I said, I believe it should be approved as it is and, and be made available because there's no side effects and the benefit goes across all cancers. I mean, I, I, I found that it's been beneficial in all, you don't need to worry about does it have the antigen on it that melanoma has. No, no, no it's not antigen specific. It is boosting <coughs> my, my guys in the lab who've done a lot of this, and here I must uh, give a flag up for the Institute of Cancer Vaccines and Immunotherapy, which have supported all my work the last 20 years when the CRUK turned us down on the grounds that immunotherapy doesn't apply to humans, it only applies to mice. And what? so some of, 
my patients were so annoyed with this, they decided to fund themselves. Without that, I'd never have got where we are. And the IMM would never be there. And also, we'd never have got the vitamin D data. Mm. That if, if you're low in vitamin D and you've got cancer, don't even think of going for other treatments because it'll not work. Chemotherapy doesn't work. They're, they're all palliative. And that was the big secret. And I must again say, you know, the ICVI, without them, we would never have come across all these things. And because I was able for a while to give it to any patient and monitor, I found it was active in basically all the cancers, that there's benefit from mesothelioma, lung cancer, ovarian cancer, um, let's say that head and neck. Uh, it, it's, it's quite remarkable uh, how, how pan it is. But it, it's pan-generic because it's reconstituting. So the, the, if you're old, your innate immune system's been just worn out, as it were, has not had the right stimulus. But if you're young and your innate immune system's collapsed, we showed in early work in colorectal cancer, the reason it's collapsed, after the cancer broke through, it spends its whole time uh, mimicking Anthony Fauci and trying to suppress... Uh, the immune system and and, uh, <laughs> and we proved that because we showed this suppression was severe and then mm -hmm. retested after these patients had had their colon cancer removed by surgeons and they were there's no other disease there removed we tested a month later the immune system had jumped back to normal mm -hmm. in these young fit people so that is science yeah. that is science we remove something and only that something and we prove that the immune system jumps back. Now, the only logical explanation for that is the thing we removed was suppressing the innate immune response. We didn't give any boosters or anything. So to me, that is science. And I was staggered that even a small little Duke's A tumour caused... Uh, That's a small colon cancer. Expression ...that we could measure in the uh, T cells out of the arm. Staggering. That is proper science. Is. And this, this is the sort of thing that's brushed aside by the, the uh, complex we're in now. Uh, medical science has now been totally taken over by a big pharma. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is really malignant. Uh, if you don't fit one of their paradigms, you don't get uh, funding. And they influence the, the funding of things like Welcome and MRC and all these people. It is truly frightening. And what I have said too, why did Welcome, MRC, the Royal College of Physicians, the Academy of Medical Sciences, and the uh, bizarrely named Royal Society, I mean, why did they not come out and point out this madness?